Good morning to you all. Um, my name's Peter Teague. I'm from a company called New Technology CADCAM. And we hope in some small way to give people tools, techniques and ideas to turn into reality the sort of things that Frank has just been talking about. So I'm going to try to take you a little bit from um, an aspiration approach to how practically you may deliver some of the things that Frank was just talking about. We've just heard about the um, critical nature of effective design. How you design something which is um, as sustainable and has as low envi an environmental impact as you can get. And one of my colleagues, uh, Terry, will be showing people later upstairs how we have some tools that help you with the life cycle assessment of the economic impact of your products, of your designs, in the way that Frank suggested. How you look at things from the raw material extraction right the way through, not just the manufacturing process, but through into use and into the end of life for that product. So how through that cycle do you assess the environmental impact properly and completely? How do you look at the energy consumed through that life cycle, not just in use, but also in manufacture? Um, a number of companies continue to introduce new computers because they have greater battery life. So every three years or so, we throw away the computers we have to get one with a shorter battery life. What a waste that can be. I don't know how much energy that consumes. Looking at the water impact for water extraction, air, and of course, carbon footprint. And being able to produce, as you go through a design process, life cycle impact assessments. How you can look at the comparative um, life cycle impact of one design versus another, as you change one part for another, as you change the material that part is made of from one to another. So as I said a few moments ago, my colleague Terry will be running a workshop this afternoon which will show those of you attending, how the tools that we provide can help you with that. But I'm going to take this now a stage further because people tend to think just about the life cycle impact of the part that a designer is making or the product they're making or the manufacturing process or through that life cycle. And I'm going to try to look at the additional benefits that I believe you can realise through effective collaboration through having workflows within your organisation and outside an organisation to allow people to collaborate to minimise the environmental impact of your products. That begins in the design department. I firmly believe that begins in the design department. It doesn't begin with collaboration outside. It actually begins with collaboration within the design department. I know a number of companies who, if you go to them and say, what's one of your biggest challenges, they say, our designers have cupboards, electronic cupboards, full of data. We don't know what it is. What's one of your biggest challenges? Our designers are always designing new parts. Why is that a problem? If any of you have wor walked through a stock room in a factory, you will see bin after bin after bin of parts that look the same, more or less, but are slightly different. The cost of carrying an inventory, the cost of making lots of parts that are slightly different but fulfill the same function is enormous. So how do you get your designers to look through the parts they've already created to avoid this situation? where you can see there are loads of parts that are the same, more or less fulfill the same function, but all designed slightly differently. So how do you get the designers to maximise the reuse of parts you already have? How do you get the designers who do mechanical design to work with their electrical design colleagues to make sure they're minimising the power throughput and the use of cabling? Very importantly, how do you get them to work with their engineering colleagues? They're engineering colleagues who can um, assess the service length of materials. 
who can simulate the life cycle for a product and say this will need replacing after X months or X years. How can you work with them? How can designers work with them to change materials, to reduce weight? People don't often think about the weight in products. We worked with a company who uh, is in the aircraft industry uh, who spent quite a lot of time trying to work out how to reduce just a small amount of weight in the table that is pulled out for you to eat on in an aeroplane. Because if you can just change the extent of material across that table whilst retaining its strength, when you have hundreds of those in a plane, you can actually have quite an impact. So how do designers work with engineers? It goes further than that. How do you, they work with the purchasing people? so that you don't end up just buying another slightly different nut or bolt. Buying something, again, very similar, uh, but actually just slightly different. Manufacturing. Um, if any of you have manufacturing companies, I'm sure that you will find somewhere on your shop floor a chap who, if you open the top left-hand drawer, the manufacturing engineer lady or gentleman, will pull out some drawings. And they'll pull out drawings that have got blue pencil or red pencil all over them. Next time, make this a bit bigger. Next time, move this hole over here because it doesn't fit when you put it together. And you will find bins full of scrapped parts. Partly that will be, oh, it didn't fit, so we had to remake it. Because the design drawing didn't really fit with manufacturing. Part it will be, oh, we didn't make the right version because the design engineers have changed the part and we didn't know about it. All of this has a huge environmental cost as well as a financial cost. So how do engineers and designers communicate with their manufacturing colleagues to make sure they're always making the latest correct version? that changes they need to make on the shop floor to manufacture something is fed back through into the designers. And most often forgot is field service. Most products nowadays are field serviced. How do you design a product so that it can be accessed easily? How do you design a product so that you can replace a single part if necessary rather than having to replace a whole assembly, a whole group of parts? How can you make it such that fixings that you use in your product will withstand repair? In the bottom of a number of computers now, you'll see a small arrow-shaped um, plastic lug that holds things down. It's a snap fitting. It's arrow-shaped because they found after about six months that the flat-shaped ones were breaking all of the time. They're having to send out more and more replacements. So how do you get all of these people to collaborate to ensure that throughout the whole cycle, including, as Frank said, when it comes to service things, when it comes to take them apart and uh, recycle them, that the product is designed in as sustainable way as possible? Well, our belief is that you need to have a central source of data. You need to have a central storage, a central store point of all of your designs, the data related to your designs, and you have to give everybody in that chain the ability to access that data, to be able to view it, to be able to amend it, to be able to mark it up. So that's our belief as to how you need to get really effective collaboration, workflows that allow you to get engineers involved, get procurement involved, get everybody in your organisation involved to make sure that the design you have not only has the least financial cost, because that is a consideration, but has the lowest environmental cost. And at each stage of that, be able to undertake the life cycle assessments of the environmental impact in carbon, energy, water, waste recycling for your product. So we're great believers in internal collaboration. But nowadays, of course, collaboration connects externally. Ever since we, uh, back in the early 90s, I was involved in kind of the early days of what we now call the internet. But how can you also collaborate externally? 
with those part suppliers that your procurement department deals with, with design engineers who may be subcontracting engineering for you, doing design work for you, with component manufacturers who are going to make parts for you, and with people out in the field who may be repairing your product and servicing your product. Well, of course, thanks to Tim Berners-Lee's work, we have this thing called the web. I don't think a presentation is complete now unless it has a cloud on it somewhere. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about how you use the internet and how you use services to collaborate externally. Um, this is an interesting thing called um, 3D Content Central, which you can go to and you can search for and find parts. So if you're looking for a sprocket or a spline or you're looking for a cog, you can go and find parts, import those drawings into your design so that you know that you have put into your design something which already exists, something which um, does not have to be redesigned and manufactured from scratch by a supplier. Now, we're not yet sophisticated enough all of the time to capture the um, sustainability assessments of these products and pull them back. But how do you make sure that you maximise the use of products already out there? So that's a thing called 3D Content Central. How do you easily collaborate with people who are going to subcontract manufacture for you? Who are going to design components for you? you know, nowadays, you don't want to do any of this by physically producing prototypes if you can. That's expensive, costs a lot of resource, as well as money. So you don't really want, if you can avoid it, to continue to make prototypes and send them out to people. Now you can send them, and you'll see there's a play button on this, you can play this and your component supplier, your subcontract manufacturer, can see how this mechanism is going to work. They can mark it up. Not sure about the material for this. They can mark it up. This size needs to be different. These toolings won't be able to fit to assemble this and send it back to you as a designer so that you can take account very easily and very quickly of the changes that will be necessary to your design to improve it so that your subcontractors don't have waste and all of the wasted energy and the environmental cost that goes with that. So that's the thing called e-drawings. But also, increasingly, you have people wanting to collaborate on projects. Not me saying I want to send this design to this subcontractor for them to look at. But how do I get my colleagues in my own company or my colleagues in subcontractors in Malaysia, in India, in the UK, to work together on a project? Well, nowadays, of course, people are producing increasingly collaborative tools which allow you to put your designs into an area where a whole number of people can access them. Yes, you have to give them permission to, but you can work through your design in a very accelerated way because you can have a number of people working together on uh, your design. And then, how do you communicate to people? How do you communicate to people um, the way to assemble, the way to service something? It's terrible the number of people who still send... Um, great bulky manuals around the world. People now increasingly are sending PDF manuals around the world. Manuals change, people forget to change them. People go to service something, think it's a part, order it, it gets delivered, it's the wrong part. Do they often send it back? No, it gets put on a shelf and left somewhere. It's never used. How do you make sure that you can use tools that allow people online to view the actual product that they are going to be repairing. How do you let them see the components in it? How do you let them see how it was constructed? How they are going to have to disassemble it and dismantle it? So you can use, um, over the internet, uh, a number of products, one of which is a thing called SolidWorks Composer, to allow um, your uh, designers, also your repair people, to... Um, maintain those products in a very uh, effective way. 
So there's lots of scope, not only inside your businesses, to introduce workflows, use collaborative tools to enable you to minimise the environmental impacts of your products and also make them financially more successful. But there are tools out there now to help you to do that externally with a whole range of partners that you deal with in business. So in short, if you have suitably designed collaboration, if you put in place workflows both inside and outside your company, if you deploy good life cycle assessment techniques, then I believe you can really magnify and improve the impact of your designs. You can improve their sustainability. You can improve their viability, the long-term viability of your businesses, and reduce the adverse environmental impacts uh, that your business um, um, uh, um, incurs. And so with that, I'd just like to say uh, to uh, our friends for inviting us here. Um, and um, I will probably not have questions now. So thank you very much indeed. Um, and back to you, Tyra.